Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave, and today I'm going to be explaining how Manchester United can improve their corners. Of course, if you are new around here, please hit that subscribe button, like that goddamn video. But anyway, let's get this party started. It's no secret that Manchester United are bad at corners. Against Leeds United, they scored their first goal from a corner this season, taking their total from 2017 up to just 16. On a basic level, corners are an easy way to add goals to the team. Using the data from the 2018 Sloan Sports Conference, you're nearly twice as likely to score from a corner than you are from open play possession. United also have the fourth tallest team on average in the Premier League, so you'd expect them to be one of the better sides. So why should Manchester United improve their corners? In an average Premier League game this season, there have been 10.6 corners, meaning that there are at least five opportunities to score that Manchester United are wasting. They're also a great way to change the game state. If United take a lead, then they can focus on doing what they do best on the counter-attack. So what's wrong with what they're doing? To start, Manchester United aren't clearing the first man often enough. If the ball doesn't reach your attackers, it's virtually impossible to score. They're also targeting areas that are difficult to score from, and even if the player reaches the cross, they need an unbelievable amount of quality and luck to score, something that's been backed up by the data. In terms of expected goals per shot from corners this season, only Norwich City have a lower value than Manchester United, and comparing them to West Ham, who've taken a similar number of corners than the Reds, West Ham have doubled United's XG value value, meaning they're twice as likely to score from an average corner based on where the ball has landed. But worst of all is the poor execution as a collective, and it's the biggest opportunity for improvement, working on that execution of corners as a collective team. We are seeing the general timing of delivery being off, so as the ball is being delivered rather than meeting at its peak of your momentum, which gives you the best chance to score, we see Manchester United players misreading the fly or arriving too soon, as they're forced to backpedal, reducing their chance of scoring to almost nothing. And this isn't just a problem with the players attacking the ball, the signalling from the corner take is very inconsistent. In a very well drilled side, you can see the corner taker signals directly affecting the movements of the attackers in the box. It also gives the timing to the players from when they should start their runs to meet the cross and optimum time, something that's just not happening at Old Trafford. There also seems to be little organisation of a routine or a plan. Scoring from set pieces is all about creating mismatches or separation for your attackers, so they've got the best environment to finish off the move. There are also many ways to do this, but they're all relied on training and repetitions that everyone knows where they need to be when it matters. Obviously, a lack of plan ties in directly with signalling. If there's no plan, a signal is useless. And finally, there seems to be little effort or desire to actually get in front of the defenders to win the ball. This could be psychological. Not scoring from over 100 attempts is bound to affect how you think and it's not an excuse, but could be fixed through preparation and planning. So how can Manchester United improve? First, I'd change the set piece takers from Luke Shaw as the left footer and Bruno Fernandes as the right footer to Alex Tellis and Jadon Sancho respectively. Crunching the numbers from total corners, accurate corners, chances created and assists over the past four seasons, Sancho and Tellis are accurate with most of their deliveries. This will make executing a routine more consistent. They've also got a notable edge in terms of assist percentage. This could be down to not playing for Manchester United recently, but the numbers suggest that when they get it right, the deliveries are better, and a change could freshen things up. It'd also free up Bruno Fernandes, which brings us on to our next point, creating a structure. When taking corners, more isn't always better, and less isn't always more. You need balance with the number of players inside the box. What I suggest is that United load the box with five players, the tallest three likely being Maguire, Varane and McTominay, as well as two forwards, Cristiano Ronaldo as one target and Bruno Fernandes as a poacher that can either sit on the goalkeeper or block defenders. Talking Ronaldo, United should use him as a major decoy, one of the best aerial forwards in the world. He'll always be a target for tight marking and his world-class movement can attract the extra defender, which creates more space for his teammates. For set pieces, Cristiano Ronaldo needs to be unselfish and a team player. I'd keep Paul Pogba on the edge in the rebound zone, where he can best use his shooting and dribbling ability, which leaves three outfielders to recover loose balls and protect against the transition, most likely with one player joining Pogba around the rebound zone and the other two more deepest players covering the areas. Now with a new corner taker and a new structure, it's time to add plays and routines. I'm not going to cover every possibility in this video, but let me know if you want that, uh, a video talking about the theory of set pieces. What's important 
with the routines is that they are the goal scoring routines and shouldn't constantly be used as they'll become predictable and you'll lose the element of surprise. The build up is as important as the routine itself. So if United wanted to use Varane to attack the near post and score a couple of corners before they should be setting this up using the same delivery, but maybe delivering it to the back post, so the opposition expects the back post delivery when it's time to execute the goal scoring play. The first play is flooding the six yard box and pinning the goalkeeper with a poacher, using an in swinging corner to hang up the ball and look to score from. By creating little room for the defenders to manoeuvre, you play to United's height advantage over most teams, and by pinning the goalkeeper and stopping them from claiming the cross, the corner taker can send in slower, more accurate deliveries, making this a more reliable method of binding a target. And by crossing it into an area so close to the goal, you increase the likelihood of the goal, and thus the XG, as a slight touch will send the goalkeeper the wrong way and the ball into the back of the net. This is a method that is favoured by West Ham, and they use it superbly against Liverpool with Kurt Zuma's winner. In this goal, West Ham used misdirection through Craig Dawson to attract Liverpool's attention to the front post, and blockers in Suchek, Antonio and Rice to stop Liverpool defenders and goalkeepers from clearing the cross. This opened a big corridor between Virgil van Dijk and Trent for Cresswell to put the ball into and Zuma to attack it, resulting in an almost guaranteed goal from three yards out. This is a great play to use against zonal defences with stoppers, who try and block runs rather than man markers, and this is something United could replicate with Bruno Fernandes on the goalkeeper, Ronaldo making the decoy near post run, Varane blocking the second line, McTominay blocking the first line, and Harry Maguire, United's most dominant aerial player, to definitely win the header at the back post. The second is all about creating space and separation for your best attacker or a mismatch with a small defender. Well suited to an outswinger, this is all about your attackers starting from deep and making runs towards the goal at different times to create confusion. Ideally, this drags the better aerial defenders away from the penalty spot, which is your intended zone and where your best attacker is lurking. Liverpool did this successfully against Southampton, as Liverpool only load the box with four players as opposed to a five or six like usual. As Trent gives the signal, the three attackers rush to the near post, leaving Virgil van Dijk against Romeo with acres of space to operate in. The Dutchman wrong foots his marker as he volleys Trent's cross home. Maybe not the finish to be expected, but this is clearly a goal from the training ground and something that United can take inspiration from. Ideally, the recipient is going to be Harry Maguire, who could dominate most stoppers and win the header, like he's done several times for England, but in reality could be any of United's main aerial threats. And the final play is all about creating traffic to block off defenders and create separation from an unexpected target. For United, this could be Varane or McTominay, as most focus will be on Maguire and Ronaldo. Manchester City did this to perfection against Leeds United's man-to-man -man scheme and highlighted the importance of signalling. As Foden waits to deliver, Laporte is in a deep position towards the back post, whilst Ake and Stones are towards the near post. City also have Grealish disrupting the keeper and Fernandinho distracting near the edge. Foden raises his arms giving a signal as Laporte moves behind Stones and Ake, creating a bundle of players at the near post. Then as he's about to deliver, Foden drops his arms as Ake spins towards the back post. The cross comes in and Ake nods the ball home. This is a really well worked goal that's all about collective play. When Laporte moves behind Stones, he blocks Stones marker from moving onto Ake as Stones blocks Ake's marker from tracking the goal scorer. This all happens so quickly that Leeds defenders don't have time to react and Ake has a free header from 10 yards out. There's literally an infinite number of ways to disrupt and manipulate defenders from set corners and we haven't even scratched the service. We could see Varane attacking the near post purposely getting ahead of defenders. Maguire could attack the ball from the edge of the rebound zone creating a dynamic advantage or attackers could run cross routes and runs to have defenders bump into each other and create separate to name a few. And don't get me started on plays like short corners, low crosses, or even bounce passes, because we could be here all day. Even if these tried and tested methods don't improve United's corners, they definitely won't make them worse. But anyway, guys, what do you think? How would you improve Manchester United's corners? And do you want me to do a little video on set piece theory? Get in the comments below. I've been Statman Dave. Subscribe you new. We'll see you later. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out some more content on the Statman Dave YouTube channel?